Let's talk about the discriminant. So the discriminant is a tool that tells us how many roots a quadratic equation is going to have. And it does this by using the quadratic formula. So just to recap, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. If it's in this form, then x is going to equal minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This is just the quadratic formula. We want to focus specifically on this part of the formula b squared minus 4ac if b squared minus 4ac is bigger than 0 well, we're actually going to find that the square root of b squared minus 4ac is going to be the traditional plus, uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and what's going to happen is the quadratic formula is just going to work perfectly it's going to do minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And we're going to get two values of x and two roots because we have the plus and the minus. So we're going to get two roots. And in the graph, this is going to get the traditional, as we already know, the two roots, one there and one there. So that works perfectly. But what happens if b squared minus 4ac is actually equal to 0? Well, what you're actually going to find is that the square root of b squared minus 4ac, you're just going to be square rooting 0, which is then also equal to 0. So then when you do the quadratic formula, what you're actually going to find is that the x is just going to equal minus 2a over b, because the b squared minus 4ac bit from before is now gone because it's equal to zero and the plus or the minus aspect is gone as well because plus or minus zero it, do, it doesn't make any sense it's just only it's just only zero it doesn't matter so what's going to happen here is we're actually only going to get one root or the more um, technical way of saying it is equal roots and this is going to get give the sort of one root that we're familiar with where it just touches the x-axis like that and there's only one root However, what happens if b squared minus 4ac is actually negative? Well, what is actually going to happen is if we try and square root it, it's not going to work, is it? Because we can't square root a negative number. That doesn't exist. So what we're actually going to find is when we try and use the quadratic formula, it's just not going to work because what we're doing when we're using the quadratic formula is square rooting a negative number which we cannot do. So the quadratic formula just breaks down, it doesn't work. And what me that means is we have zero roots because the quadratic formula is what gives us out the roots and it can't give us any roots so therefore there are zero roots um, for the quadratic if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So this gives us the typical, as we already know, where it doesn't go near the x-axis at all and there are zero roots. So you don't need to remember anything on the previous slide if you don't want to, that's just an explainer. Um, I just find explaining stuff is a lot easier for, it, for me to remember it in my head if I just follow the logical steps. But basically just what you need to remember is that for the quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, if b squared minus 4ac is bigger than zero, then there are two distinct real roots or two roots. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, then there is one or more typically said equal roots. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero then there are no real roots for the quadratic. Um, so to put this into number form to make it easier to understand it, if we use the example that we keep using y equals 2x squared minus 6x minus 8, if we compare this to the traditional quadratic so ax squared plus bx plus c, we can say if we compare the two of these we can say that a is equal to 2 b is equal to minus 6 and c is equal to minus 8. We can then find b squared minus 4ac for this equation by saying b squared which will be minus 6 squared minus 4a which will be 2 c which will be minus 8 we can equal all of this to 100 if you use the calculator 100 is bigger than 0, so therefore, um, because we found out that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 100, that means that b squared minus 4ac is bigger than 0 for y equals 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. So we can say that for y equals 2x squared minus 6x minus 8, 
there are two roots because it's discriminant or b squared minus 4ac is bigger than zero. Um, the discriminant is something that is going to come up um, quite a lot um, in A level, so it's good, so it's useful that you understand it and get used to it now. Okay, here is a question on discriminants. So pause the video, have a go at the question, and I'll go for the answer in about five seconds. Okay. So this is a very typical exam question I will ask you in terms of it's quite um, algebra heavy. So um, the first, the thing that you need to note is that it says it has equal roots, aka one root. So you know that b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. So if you find a, b, and c in this equation, if you use the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form, you'll find that a is equal to one, b is equal to three p and c is equal to p. You can sub this into the discriminant to do b squared, which is 3p squared, minus 4a, which is 1, c, which is p, and that will be 9p squared minus 4p. You can f uh, And that will be equal to 0. You can factorise this to do p, 9p minus 4, is equal to 0. So that means that there are two possible answers, one where p is equal to zero, however it says in the question that p is a non-zero constant, so therefore you know that p cannot be zero. The other answer is when 9p minus 4 equals zero, so 9p equals 4, and that means that p is going to equal 4 over 9. And that is the correct final answer. Um, a way that you can um, get a good indication of whether you've got the right answer to this question or not is if you sub p into the original equation, so that would be um, x squared plus 4 over 3x plus 4 over 9 equals to 0. If you put that into a calculator using the um, equation, um, uh, setting in the calculator as I taught before, then you'll find that x is only equal to minus 2 over 3 and there's only one root. So that means that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 and that will give you a fairly good indication that you've got the answer right because your equation will only have one root. Okay, just a final word on modelling. Modelling comes up a lot in A level in a lot of different topics. The only thing that you need to do when modeling, the only thing that you need to get used to is you need to convert to what the model is saying to an actual maths question. That's the only skill that you need to learn with modeling is to convert the real life model into just an easy maths question. The best way to get better at this is just to do as many questions as possible. There isn't too many questions um, for quadratic modeling, um, but modeling comes up so much in future topics. Um, so just do as many questions as possible um, and you'll get used to it and it will become quite easy for you. So that's the end of this video. Um, luckily, again, everything in this video is just GCSE revision.